um, twice a day for six months, and she regained her uh, sight and appeared uh, at um, the Invest in Emmy um, uh, meeting a couple of years ago. Uh, I was giving a presentation on the actual HHV6, and she stood up and said, I am the patient. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody applauded. It was nice. Uh, the, it's important to identify actually uh, pro appropriate uh, patients um, to, who actually are um, uh, Van Gang cyclophere of uh, valsite um, um, appropriate because of uh, its toxicity. Next. Uh, this is uh, Jonathan's um, work on the gene expression. Unfortunately, as I said, Jonathan actually lost tenure and actually um, has not been, been seen actually uh, for a couple of years. And now we're actually picking up the reins uh, at the ME uh, Association. Next, uh, ME Center at Sina. This is uh, John, Jonathan Kerr's collaborators. He actually was admired by many. Um, and is a great loss uh, to uh, Emmy uh, research. Next. Uh, he actually um, had suggested um, a gene microarray that could actually be a lab test. Again, actually, um, his work was, was lost. Next. And these are the actual uh, associated genes that uh, Jonathan um, described from the specimens that we sent him. Next. This is the actual, another. Um, uh, diagnostic uh, test that uh, came out of his work, and this was actually uh, in collaboration with uh, the Department of Pediatrics at the Imperial College. Next, <coughs> GCMAF. GCMAF actually is a substance actually that um, uh, was uh, described um, about 20 years ago, um, not in relationship to um, uh, ME, it was actually in relationship to uh, other viral disease. Um, and in cancer and the other viral disease that included uh, HIV. The uh, GCMAF protein um, is a, macro a macrophage activating uh, factor. Um, it actually seems to activate um, uh, part of the immune system. Next. Um, Amplogen is made by hemispherics. There's a research uh, treatment protocol being looked at in five centers in California. We're actually looking at it in New York, um, LAP in, New, uh, in Carolina, uh, and Nancy Climas in Florida. Hemispherics are part funding the project, uh, but it's a very expensive uh, project. Next. Uh, retrovirus uh, XMRV is uh, now actually um, coming into um, Judy's um, domain. Uh, it was actually a very exciting um, uh, research and we then actually uh, saw uh, Judy actually um, being harassed, for want of a better word. Next. Um, the Whitmore Peterson uh, Institute uh, in Nevada actually um, uh, where the work was done, um, then actually uh, Judy had to uh, withdraw uh, the article. Next. Uh, it's not, um, retroviruses uh, were not actually um, initially described um, two years ago. They were described 18 years ago. Um, Elaine de, de Fritas actually uh, wrote uh, this uh, paper, Retroviral Sequences Related to Human uh, uh, T Lymphocytes. Uh, in the, the uh, proceedings of the National Academy of Science uh, in 1991. So the idea still actually bears merit to actually uh, further, further research. Maybe not in the XMRV of virus itself, but in actually other uh, etiological agents. Next. Uh, hepapressin, uh, this is a study actually that we actually used, um, a, a, a control study against um, control uh, with uh, cutopressin, hepapressin, and then with um, immunoprop, immunoplus. And we see actually that there was actually some uh, benefit. Next. The Karnofsky score, you probably actually all heard about the Karnofsky score. Many times actually I uh, sort of just flippantly sort of say, and the Karnofsky score was, and people are saying, well, exactly what is that? Uh, Karnofsky score is um, a relatively well used uh, scientific um, uh, scoring method of, to determine actually how the patient is doing. Um, it goes actually from zero to 100. Zero, you're dead. 100, <laughs> you're terrific. And the actual um, subtypes actually are 
you're actually moribund at 10, you're very sick at 20, you're severely uh, sick at 30, and so on up the scale. So you can actually uh, define uh, how the patient is doing. It's a, it's a um, relatively simple, um, sim maybe simplistic uh, method of scoring, but it is widely used. Next. Uh, in the MAF um, study that uh, we have underway, we actually used the um, uh, Karnofsky uh, scale. Uh, GCMAF is the injectable um, macrocyte activating factor. MAF 878 um, is grown, uh, is an oral uh, um, probiotic grown in yogurt. Uh, the idea was actually first um, generated um, uh, by Paul Cheney um, with uh, collaboration of uh, uh, one of his uh, collaborators in Italy. Um, next, we have found it actually to be somewhat effective. The GC MAF actually given um, by injection once weekly uh, uh, increases the Karnofsky score by 26. The MAF, which is the probiotic uh, yogurt um, substance, increases it by 15. Um, next. Prions, um, we actually had hoped to have had a talk actually on prions. Uh, that actually has um, uh, generated some interest. Uh, uh, Prusiner um, in 1997 actually um, uh, showed actually that prions did exist. Uh, we still don't, don't know exactly um, what prions do. Some people have actually uh, claimed, including uh, Chris Lowland, uh, that uh, they might actually play a part um, in uh, CFS. That remains to be seen. Next. Uh, ongoing and future research, we're actually looking at this GCMAF um, um, substance. We're looking at amplogen. We're looking at uh, B12 changes with Betamax. We're doing a retrospective uh, analysis of carnitine. And we're actually um, hopefully trying to replicate uh, rituximab, the um, Mello uh, study in Norway. The unfortunate thing about rituximab is that uh, patients die from it. Uh, so we're not exactly in a, a mode of um, uh, flippantly uh, using rituximab without actually uh, very careful um, consideration. And unfortunately in America and in my center at Sinai, uh, there is very strict control uh, over chemotherapeutic drugs, which uh, rituximab is. Next. Now, I'm actually going to call upon my research assistant for her maiden speech at a conference. Um, and she's going to actually talk briefly on a couple of slides about what we're doing at, M at the Mount Sinai IME Center. I give you Mikol Spike. Well, I'm the research coordinator at the MECFS Center. Um, I'll just briefly, briefly go over what things we're doing in our research now. Um, Right now we're conducting multi-scale biological analysis on the immune system and also doing genomic analysis um, on patients and also controls, 330 total. Right now we're in the pilot phase where we'll be, we're looking at 15 patients and 15 controls. Um, the study has four specific aims. Um, this is actually an old slide. We now have four aims. At baseline, we will compare whole and immune system cell subsets in our cases and our controls, which are matched by BMI, age, and sex. Um, participants will go on an exercise bike the first day they're enrolled in the study. The study is four days long. Um, they will exercise for zero to 20 minutes, as long as they can handle. And then we'll be collecting these same samples 24 hours, 48 hours, and 72 hours after the exercise to look at immune cell differences. We know. Um, Post-exertional malaise exists in these patients, so maybe on a cellular level we can figure out why that is. Our third aim is that we will characterize intestinal microbiome profiles in all these participants. We'll also do whole exome and whole genome sequencing on them as well. Um, and we will characterize um, graded exercise therapy on all of our patients. Um, you can go to the next slide. Dr. Enlander discussed some of our collaborators. Our main collaborators are Christian Becker. He's a pulmonologist. He's the PI of the study and sort of has his hands in every department 
of the study, I can't get into it, but the study involves many departments and many labs collaborating and working together on this. Um, Dr. Enlander is obviously our clinical expert, and he's providing us with his patients uh, as patients in our study. And Eric Shad is the director of the multi-scale biology genomics department, and he will be doing the RNA and DNA sequencing. Um, next slide. So everyone has to meet our inclusion and exclusion criteria. Right now we're looking at people from the ages of 25 to 55. Um, all patients have been diagnosed based on the Facuta, Facuta Canadian consensus. Um, and also they must, for two weeks, get off their immune treatment therapies before they start the study. So it's all uniform for all patients. Next slide. So this is just an idea of our overall study schedule. Right now we're looking at people, patients will go on the exercise bike the first day and then for four days they will have samples collected and they'll do questionnaires. We're doing that for 30 people total until we figure out the best, we'll analyze for the best time point so they only have to come back for one day. So the study won't be as involved and strenuous for patients. Once we enter the main phase we'll, where we'll be looking at 150 patients and 150 controls. So it's 330 people total and it will be ongoing for the next several months. Next slide. So Dr. Enlender mentioned that we'll be able to document patients that are able to exercise and not able to exercise. Right now graded exercise therapy is the recommended treatment by the CDC and the Institute of Health in Great Britain. So we'll be able to have a discussion when we're done about whether this is the correct recommendation or whether we need to open this up for just more ideas. Um, and so we'll be able to examine again on a cellular level also the post-exertional malaise and what's going on in patients that <coughs> suffer after they try to exercise. Um, next slide. Yeah, okay, that's it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Well okay. done. Well okay. done. Well done. <laughs> well done. Now, now, actually, your next speech can yes. not be called your maiden speech. That's true. Uh, Thank you. We're, 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 we're going to talk about this uh, later at the end of the conference. Um, so, uh, what Nicole was basically saying uh, is uh, that the um, post exertional malaise uh, study is that you, if you listen, zero to 20 minutes. What does that mean? It means actually that there are some patients who are unable to exercise. And um, there are patients actually who are bedridden with this disease. David, where are you? David, where's Antoinette? This is David. David, when I first met him several years ago, was bedridden by this disease. David actually um, could not get out of bed David actually could not actually tolerate bright light. David actually was, what would you say you were, David? Incapacitated. Yes? Yes, um, Now David actually, as you can see, helps Antoinette and helps me. I thank you, David. And I... Now it gives me great pleasure to hand the microphone over um, to Charles, Charles Shepard, um, and Charles actually will continue.